All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the um, September 26, 2017 Select Board meeting. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. And first up is approval of the agenda. Approve. Thank you. Thank you, Farhad. Um, are there any additions, Kathleen, or something, subtractions? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm well, <laughs> doesn't hurt to ask. Right? Um, so all in favor, please. What line? 2018 Municipal Planning Grant application. Any second. Thank you, Laura and Farhad. Um, is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Nick. Um, any opposed? All right. We're all in favor. Thank you. That was quick. 
So we are running a few minutes early for the discussion of the Vermont Leagues of Cities and League of Cities and Town Legislative Policy. Is there anything that we could do really quick, Kathleen? I don't think anything is really quick on our. Um, the next one might be okay because um, we're just determining the location of the building meeting. Mm -hmm. The next one, um, the citizens' petition for Vermont gas easements. Oh, okay. Might be you know okay to do next because we're just determining the location for the meeting. So what? Why don't we want to do this one first? I was just going to wait a few more minutes so that they don't so they don't miss the discussion and we have to okay. go again. Twenty. So we have that, and you also have um, the Green Mountain Power easements that were that were out on a 1061 notice. Yeah. And you can move forward with those. Okay. Does your, anyone have that. an objection to moving that? Mm -mm. Okay. Would you like to? That's item. Which which item is that? Number ten. Number ten. Yeah. Number ten. So we had um, we were looking at authorizing um, Kathleen to sign two previously approved utility easement deeds for Green Mountain Power in the Bethel Block parking lot and off of Springside Drive. Um, they were an administrative matter intended to close the loop on two easements for which the board had earlier approved in um, section 1061 notifications. Um, the mandatory 30-day notification periods have expired without public comment, and council has prepared the final easement deeds for signature. So I'm not sure if people had any questions about this. The board? Well, it's interesting that this is on our agenda, you know, at the same time that we're looking at the Vermont gas easement. Mm -hmm. We did discuss this in earlier meetings and determine that this is a different different situation. Um, so so I would move that we authorize our town manager to sign the easement deed for um, for an underground line extending from GMP the pole to be in a northwesterly direction to the lands now uh, um, or formerly the Patel Block Partners. So we can handle that first. Yep. And then is there a second? One second. Okay, thank you, Farhad. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Nick. Uh, any opposed? All right, so do you want to lead us through the next one? Okay, and also authorize our town manager to sign the easement deed um, for an overhead line con commencing from the existing GMP pole 7 in a southeasterly direction approximately 110 feet to conclude at the new GMP pole 71, located on a private drive entered off of Springside Drive. I'll second. Thank you, Farhad. Um, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Nick. Um, any opposed? <laughs> all right. All in favor, thank you. All right, so let's go back. Um, we have two things that are on our agenda for this tonight, and that is one to appoint our delegate, but also give that delegate voting instructions as to how we want to proceed. We have quite a few people here to talk about this, I think. So what I'd like to do is open it up for the board to discuss amongst themselves, and then open it up for some public comment, and then hopefully have a quick board discussion again before we decide anything. Okay. All right. Did any board members want to have some thoughts since our last meeting that they wanted to discuss first? I, I just think there's a lot of talk in town about this survey that we did. A lot of people are supporting the survey, and we should give them due consideration to the people what they want before we sign off on this, mm -hmm. I think. Oh, sorry. No, I'll let that go. Um, so <laughs> there seems to be a lot of discussion about how well represented the survey was of how the town of Middlebury feels. And so I got some numbers from uh, town clerk Ann Webster, and she had between um, 8,200 and 8,400 current residents of Middlebury, and that includes the college. So I estimated about, uh, no, 
was 8,300 to 8,500. And so I estimated about 8,400, and that did include students. So if you figured 599 of the survey respondents said they were Middle Middlebury residents, that's about a 7% rate of respondents given the number of people. Um, we didn't ask if they were registered voters, so I didn't use that number. That number is even considerably less. So about four, around 48, somewhere around. 48.99 is what you sent me. Mm -hmm. 48.99 was the mm -hmm. current number of registered voters. But since we didn't ask that question, I went with the residents. Um, 425 said they supported it. Out of 8,400 residents, that's about 5%. So it's not a majority. It's a majority of those responding to the survey, but not a majority of the residents. And I think that's been a little misrep misstated recently, at least in my opinion. Yes, we had a good, strong response to the survey. Yes, of those responded, but it's not a majority of the residents of Middlebury. So um, I've actually, since the survey in the last meeting, had had a few people come to me and say, they weren't in favor, and I think the pro side did a good job of getting people to respond to the survey, and maybe the opposite side didn't. So I think that just should weigh a little bit in in how we consider the results. Okay. Um, I think there needs to be some clarification as to what the position that VLCT is taking. I mean, the initial position was they opposed legalization. Uh, they've moved to a position of conditional acceptance, that is to say um, uh, approval or le uh, legalization. They're not recommending legalization, but they're saying uh, legalization only if there are appropriate safeguards for health and safety. So uh, I, I mean, I've, I've received emails and so on um, where this wasn't clear mm -hmm. and um, whether we support the VLCT policy on this or not uh, the VLCT is no longer recommending opposition mm -hmm. I think that needs to be said they recommend conditional acceptance okay so I, I, I just want everyone to be clear as to what we're talking about. Uh, the, the poll obviously was prior to that, mm -hmm. and so it was a, a question of legalization or not. Uh, now we're uh, considering a question of conditional uh, acceptance of legalization. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's all. Thank you. Did you want to talk? And then I want to give Nick a chance if he wants to say something. Yeah, I think it's very compelling um, what Heather said about the survey respondents. I mean, it was still a pretty good response to a survey, and it's true that if we polled people like a town meeting or a vote, like a, at a, on election day, we'd get a higher response. But we don't always get a high number of people there either, right, Anne? Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm not sure that it would come out too differently, but it's true, you know, mm -hmm. like we could keep surveying. And I think the value of, of having done this is that we're having the dialogue. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, we're learning more about the issue and the position. And I think that's valuable and good. So, so I'm glad that we're here and I'd like to hear more comments from the community that's attending tonight. And I appreciate what's been shared already by email and in letters to the editor to us and I mm -hmm. think that those are those are good um, arguments also so I want to listen a little bit more and I have to admit that I have only had a certain amount of time to really study deeply everything on this so I am still in my learning curve myself and I admit that you know and and that's what's going to make the decision challenging tonight mm -hmm. yeah. so let's hear Nick? Further. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I the board members, you know, I was thinking about this last night on the plane as I was going through the select board package, and hopefully my signal will stay strong enough uh, so my thoughts can get through. 
Jones, I look at this issue of marijuana legalization, and I see what's happening across the country. I know that legalization for mine is inevitable. Personally, I don't object to an adult who chooses to consume marijuana for personal reasons, and I know people across the country who do use it for a variety of reasons. They know the risks, just like alcohol, but they are responsible and their usage doesn't harm the community. I believe that they are typical of the people who do use or might choose to use marijuana now and when it becomes legal, and I'm fine with that. However, I have to be realistic and accept that there will be a certain percentage of individuals who will cross the threshold of civil responsibility, just like those who drink or text while driving. And this increases the risk to the Middlebury community. The potential hazards to Middlebury can increase, and that's why a select board member have to be concerned. Now, we on the select board don't have the luxury of viewing this issue only from a favorable point of the responsible consumer. We all know that would be nice, but when one sits in this position, it's not possible. And so we have to see the issue from many angles, favorably and unfavorably, and understand the risks that legalization will impose on our town. This board and the town's professional staff must then understand how to best manage the risks. And this is the responsibility of the citizens of Middlebury expect. Now, some have stated that legalization won't change use habits because marijuana is already used. And as one who travels around the country and goes to states where it has been legalized, I have to say I strongly disagree. Because what happens is legalization makes this substance readily available to all of society, including some who would otherwise avoid it. I frequently travel to Colorado and Oregon that have legalized recreational marijuana. And in fact, right now, I'm making this call from a national park project in Oregon. And in these states, there are numerous retail outlets selling a wide variety of products. There are shops that sell raw products next to gas stations and convenience stores. There are bakeries and candy shops selling lace edibles that look just like their non-lace counterparts, and they're found throughout these communities. And it's interesting when you speak with some of the people out here and listen to the problematic issues that they do, in fact, encounter. Jason Point, hotel manager, describes to these guests who consume edibles without realizing the potency, and they require emergency care. Or cannabis retailers, including edible shops, who worry about the amount of cash in their stores because since it's still federally illegal, um, credit banking industry avoids it and credit cards are not used. So there tend to be a lot of cash in and the other retailers nearby who may experience some negative issues from the customers at a neighboring cannabis shop who tend to be on the careless side. So what it comes down to is that as a town, we will keep encountering situations of public safety and also planning and zone. And we, so therefore, there are some risks that we can expect, and we need to know how to manage them. And so here's where I see this issue. Legalization is coming, and, some of, and for some, it can't come soon enough. But as the elected official, along with my fellow board members, I have a responsibility to do what I can for the safety of Middlebury citizens, and to try to best understand the risks of legalization, and how to best manage these risks, so that it creates a, a safe environment. So, when I look at the present BLCT position on this, I think that's exactly what they're saying. And so, at this time, I find that I have to agree with it. Okay. Is that it, Nick? That's it, Susan. Uh, oh, over. Thank you. <laughs> and it sounds like we've got Brian Carpenter on the phone, too. It's Brian, we were um, just talking amongst ourselves before we opened it up to the public. Did you want to say something, too, about your views? Any discussion, Susan, about the uh, governor's uh, committee that's studying uh, this, the issue? Not yet. I think Nick mentioned it, but mm. um, I don't think we've discussed that yet. Nick uh, pointed out that there was uh, some discussion about that in the Rebel Carol a couple weekends ago. And, uh, the one thought that I did have since that time is the SAC committee is charged to do a lot of the tasks that we're concerned with at the 
at the local level. And um, it might be prudent for our delegate to, to encourage the VLCT to support that committee's undertaking. Thank you. Okay. Um, for myself, before I open it up, I have had a lot of discussions about this with people lately, um, and I am pleased that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns changed their stance from where it was to where it is now. It's much closer to where I would want it be to be now. Um, I had a nice conversation with Joanna. Was it yesterday? It feels like it was forever ago. Um, <laughs> but I think. Um, what I realized is that there's a difference between what I talked to her about was a leap of faith of we can do this and the details will work itself out. And for me, my, I feel like my position is one of the details and we need to make sure that those details get worked out and we're responsible for those details. So it's a different kind of leap um, and one that I looked at uh, the statement that the league put together was marijuana should only be legalized for recreational purposes after all public safety, public health, and local regulatory and budgetary concerns are adequately addressed. And one of the things that I realized was that I would be okay with taking the word all out. I was going to say the same thing. Because that word tends to make it. Um, something that's very difficult to overcome into something that can be overcome. And I think that is more reflective of where I'm coming from. So I'd like the board to think about that, but I also really want to hear what the public has mm -hmm. to say um, and, and keep, keep talking about what we want to do. I mean, I, I also saw one of the emails that came, I think it was yesterday, um, Allison, suggested that we could submit the survey to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and I thought that was a great suggestion because it would have whatever our instructions are but also offer up a, a viewpoint that from our town that I think is, is quite unique and um, that we asked and here's the answer and I think it means that we share and can also allow that leap of faith at the same time that we're having our leap of conditions, <laughs> that we can share that at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I was going to open it up for the community. If you can come up and sit at the table, it's not a microphone for the room, it's a microphone for the recording, but if you'd like to say something, please come up and state your name for the record. Um, and we'd love to hear what you have to say. Somebody's got to be brave. <laughs> it's Joanna. <laughs> All my materials here. All right. <laughs> and I'm not going to keep you to a certain time period, but we do have. I'll be brief. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Joanna Caldwell from East Middlebury. Um, and I took the liberty to draft what I thought would be a, uh, another kind of a statement for um, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. As the state of Vermont moves towards legalization and regulation of cannabis, municipalities should put in place mechanisms to spend taxes raised from cannabis businesses towards local job creation and town infrastructure improvement. And the reason that I did that is because I believe from the bottom of my heart that this is a social good. And so that kind of language is framing it as such, as a social good. Um, so I'm speaking tonight um, on behalf of myself, but also as part of Middlebury showing up for racial justice. And we are a local chapter of a national organization that supports the rights of all people, especially those who face systemic generational injustice based on race, ethnicity, or immigration status. And our mission really is to educate our Addison County community about white supremacy and the way it harms everyone. Um, so there are so many global and national problems that we often feel powerless to solve. And 
get, if we pay attention, we may see that there is a local opportunity to take action. And that's why I'm here tonight. I completely rearranged my schedule because this issue is very important to me. Uh, the war on drugs has been an unmitigated disaster since its beginnings in the United States several decades ago. And I learned a tremendous amount about the racist beginnings of the war on drugs from this book, Chasing the Scream by Johan Hari. And I really encourage everybody to read this. But if you prefer to get your facts in documentary form, you could also watch America's War on Drugs, a four-part series on the History Channel. I urge all of you on the select board to educate yourselves on this issue because drug policy of this country, which has been exported all over the world, has resulted in militarized borders, mass incarceration, brutalization of communities of color, white people also, though to a lesser degree, separation of countless families, and increased rates of addiction and overdose. I am sure you are aware that the United States is the world leader in incarceration of its citizens. But did you know that Vermont is the leader in racial disparities in incarceration? Yes, we have a higher percentage of people in co of color incarcerated relative to the percentage of our population than any other state. So this, you know, it might seem like a small thing what the select board does with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns about cannabis, but it's not a small thing, it's a big thing. Since I don't have time to list any more troubling statistics, just one more, though, one more. <laughs> Did you know that states with regulated, legalized cannabis have seen a 24% reduction in opioid deaths? So if that isn't a reason like to do this yesterday, we're in a massive opioid crisis right now, and a 24% reduction in deaths. Um, I will urge you to not use your office to support any kind of stalling on this vital issue. In the words of Vermont's Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman, cannabis reform would be the biggest economic development step the state will have taken in the last 10 or 20 years. It will provide resources for prevention and treatment. Mounting evidence shows that youth rates are steady or dropping nationally as more states legalize and regulate. Thank you very much. Could you read your proposed language again for the Sure. Statement? Yes. As the state of Vermont moves toward legalization and regulation of cannabis, municipalities should put in place mechanisms to spend taxes raised from cannabis businesses towards local job creation and town infrastructure improvement. I'm curious that you didn't add like treatment prevention or, and prevention measures. Or education. Um, yeah, well this was just a, a first crack and I don't know, okay. like I, I, I'm very aware that statewide, that there will be statewide taxes and that a significant portion of those will go to education, prevention, and treatment. Okay. So I was really thinking like specifically about our town and I was specifically about things like our library that we're about to have this big battle over can we fund this improvement to the library. Well, here it is. I mean, this is the answer. Um, I think. Thank you very enough. much for listening. <laughs> can I comment? Yeah, go ahead. So per the the LCT's representative that came and talked to us and the status of, is it Dylan's rules in the state of Vermont, we don't have any authority as a town unless it's designated in the statute. And so we don't have those controls that you specify unless the legislator, legislative bodies deem it so. And so for me, part of supporting this means that we're making sure that we have those regulations in place before legalization happens. So we're trying to look out for the town no matter how we feel on the legalization issue. And I, I just want to make th that clear is that if we don't look after the interests of the town of Middlebury and having some of those <coughs> regulations to do what you suggested, it, it may not happen and I think you know for me that's that's what I'm trying to do um, trying to make sure that towns have the local control that we need 
-hmm. for this to go through and go through well. Mm -hmm. So I, it's a I just point. want to make that. Mm -hmm. It's a great point, Jenna. Betty, did you want to come up? Betty Nuovo. Come um, on. Can you come uh, up to the microphone, okay. please? I've been in the legislature to discuss this at length. And each topic, like how many police you need, how many uh, hospitalization, and how, how it affects children, spent days and weeks on it, each subject, uh, and all day. So it's not possible um, <coughs> to really get down into it as a small group. The other thing is the legislature will, as, as you stated, uh, will make the law. And it will make the law of what you can do. Mm -hmm. Then there has to be rules. Nothing will happen. And the date on the thing will be at least six months after they vote for it. So that they can have rules and get all the rules, and those rules will include what you can do or what you can't do. And they may make a mistake and not have, you might have something to say that's not either you can do it or on the list you can't do it. So I just wanted to know the process of this. It's not even going to start till February, mm -hmm. or January. And then uh, I don't know how long the committee will take. I don't know how long, how many people they will have to speak. Uh, if you want, if you could take and go up and speak to them. Uh, there's no reason why you have to just go through the League of Cities and Towns. Uh, you can go through that way, and you can go through your own way. So uh, you know, if you want to talk about it, but uh, at this moment, um, Nobody in the state of Vermont has the right to make any decisions um, on it. You don't need to, if you, if you spend the time and the energy to pick up rules and things what you're going to do, they may be things that they're giving you, or they may be things that you can't do even though you have to them. Okay. Um, but I think you do need to uh, have some discussion on on all of the issues, uh, and you should think about sending somebody from Millsbury up there. Okay. I have some other issues that, that just, uh, if you want to know some information uh, about the potency of marijuana, it's much, much higher than it was in the 60s and 70s. So you're not dealing with what you knew as you grew up the potency of marijuana is not the same. Um, the state police will have to, there's a lot of things they gotta put in place. One is police. They need 29 policemen, right? They need it. So they need money to pay each of them. They'll have different money for different ones with different talents. So somebody <coughs> may get 60,000, somebody may get 90,000. I have a slash idea. Then you got medical <laughs> process and retirement. Um, then um, children, I read an article in the newspaper, New York Times, Thursday, Saturday, 20, uh, the 21st of this month, year, month that children in um, uh, Washington and uh, uh, all other places that have have passed this uh, are finding the marijuana. I know that there's going to be a rule that children can't have it and they can't give it to it and it can be in the place. But I'm taking it and I put it down here and I walk off and the kid comes and he swallows it and lives in the hospital. That happened, um, I think there was $60,000, 60,000 children last year that died that way. That's, that's not that's true. Absolutely I read not that true. The, it may not be true, but I read that. Why are you saying in front of the select board? That's a hey guys. Uh, I wish you would just uh, show some respect. Okay. That's okay. That's what the newspaper I read said. 
So I have a right to say. Yeah, what okay. she does. Alternative facts. Uh, be careful what you say. Let's be respectful of everybody's thing, okay? Thank you. There's another issue that will be brought up at the legislature that includes where can you use it? Will it be like tobacco? No, I know uh, public buildings, parks, etc., etc. et cetera. But, you know, there's a whole bunch of things you can't uh, smoke um, things. So, I mean, you can't smoke here. Right. Um, so, uh, and uh, uh, money from the federal banks, um, so like the federal bank downtown, you can't put your money there at this point. Okay. Uh, they're working on it, but it's a federal, and federals have no marijuana. Okay. So there's no way to do the money. But I know the banks are working on that subject so that they can get that money. Okay. But as far as I know, it's not effective now. So I just want to then, the, and I'm glad that you and you are looking at the issues and what kinds they are. But this is only just a minimum. I mean, just, uh, so anyway, um, I just want you to know, and if you want any help, uh, I've been there. Okay. <laughs> Studying it. Thank you, Betty. Thank you. I, I just, I have a quick question for you, Betty. I've never met you, so. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned children about uh, uh, getting a risk of them grabbing stuff when you leave it on the table and stuff. Uh, how different is it from alcohol and cigarettes that we always already use now? That's true. Well, it's, it's something you need to know, need yep. to discuss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Uh, and it is, does happen. Yep. They are taking children to the hospital. Of course. Uh, and so uh, we, have, we, have, we say we're not going to let children have it. Well. You know, sometimes they find it. No, I agree with you. But my question is, how is it different from alcohol or cigarettes, which are harmful for children also, that somebody can leave it on the table and kids can consume alcohol, right? So well, sometimes the children, they have to, because they drink so much. Yep. It's a so good point. Maybe the same thing. It would probably be the same. Yep. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know. Right. We didn't get into that particular issue. Yep. Thank you, Thank Betty. You. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. Is there someone else who would like to speak? We can probably have one more person. Win, come on up. Maybe two. Is are there more people? Who else would like to speak? Okay. Okay. We'll have two more. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Win. I do. We'll try to keep this brief. Thank you, Win. Um, my name is Winslow Caldwell. I live in East Middlebury, and I, I have just been taking notes in the course of this meeting, so I'd like to address what it is that I have heard. Um, I have heard an openness on the part of the select board, which I really appreciate, to listening to citizen input and to trying to make a very informed decision and to make clear the changes that were made to the statement that is proposed and I think the change is in the right direction. However, and this is something which is common in the many decades long discussion of this issue, which is a massive amount of anecdotal and misinformation. I have great respect for Betty and the service that she has been to our state, but she stated a fact which is entirely wrong, is not a fact. And she was in power to make statewide decisions on this issue. And it saddens me that she was making decisions based on incorrect facts without being aware of the truth. There are statistics which come out from states that have legalized cannabis use. And rather than nix visiting with a person at a gas station, they give us a much better idea about the real impact. And the impact is that there has not been a spike in traffic deaths or driver-related accidents because of increased use of cannabis. This is partly because alcohol use is down 
and so there are fewer drunken drivers on the street. There is not a spike in hospital emergency room visits. People who use anecdotal evidence of this kind are misdirecting the discussion. And we benefit from having a discussion which is based in the truth and in the actual experiences of people and places that have already moved ahead with this experiment. And I want to just address Heather. When you say that 5 or 7 percent of the people were approving, technically you are right. Um, but the survey had an enormous response <coughs> to most other surveys. And on Front Course Forum and other places, I saw many people advocating that people respond to the survey because they wanted to express their um, hesitancy about legalization. In other words, the, the side which is opposing legalization, to me, seemed pretty motivated to get their people out there respond to the survey. Um, let's remind ourselves that we have a president of the United States that was elected with perhaps 24% of the eligible voters. And that's in an election where many people were motivated to go to the polls. This was a survey. And so nationwide, many more than 50% approve of moving towards legalization of marijuana. We live in a state which is more progressive, and we live in a town which is that much more progressive within our state. And so for you to infer that a very small, less than 10% approve of legalization is misdirecting facts and is using anecdote and misdirection to try to take our discussion away from a rational discussion. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Wendy. May I comment? Sure. And did you want to come up too on your way? So go ahead, Heather. So I can't, Kathleen, I can't seem to find the, the information that was on here from the public health committee, the sheriffs and stuff. There were some facts in there uh, at the bottom of that letter that talked about accidents and stuff from public safety. It's in, it's in our packet. Yeah, I know. I read it, but now I can't find it on my... This one? Yeah. I can't read that from it, here. It, it's Vermont Digger uh, from the Chiefs of Police. Oh, is that what it was from? Yep. Oh, okay, I see it. Now. Which one is it now? Vermont Digger. So how about if we so come back to you, Heather? Okay, that's okay. fine. We're on a time limit, so I'm just going to ask you to be brief. I'm quick. Okay, and you're in, state your name for the record, please. Uh, my name is Jack Watts. Thank you. Uh, I think I've spent more time in Colorado than Nick has. Okay, Jack, you outdid me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But my time has been spent in the rural part of the state. And it's very different from the Denver area, where I think many of the statistics on marijuana use emanate. Uh, so I want to caution that that be a consideration in evaluating what's going on in other places in, in the country where marijuana has been approved to take into account that we are a more rural area than Denver, Colorado is. The area of Colorado where I've spent my time, I have seen absolutely no change as to the effect of the marijuana legalization. Uh, another point that I would like to make regarding considering uh, information is that uh, given Heather's rightful concern that the uh, results of the survey may not be totally representative, I think you have to consider that that is a starting point for the town, and that therefore, rather than try to establish that 
legalization of marijuana will be safe, I think you're obligated to say, would legalization of marijuana be unsafe? Logically, and I look at it. Yeah, okay, explain your point. <laughs> um, logically, no. can we establish that it will be unsafe? You mean you want, is there evidence that it is unsafe? I Does think, it ever do harm? I think I would like to see scientific evidence. I realize that. Not anecdotal. All right, yes, yes, yes. You, you, you've used that term, anecdotal. Everything that's been said tonight has been anecdotal, including your remarks. The point is, it seems to me, uh, I, I find it really rather strange. Um, the use of cannabis, is that a public good? I really don't, I mean, for medical purposes, obviously. Fentanyl is a public good for medical purposes. Uh, so is morphine. Um, we, have, we have made that available. Uh, we have decriminalized marijuana. That, that hasn't been mentioned before. We're not talking about putting people in jail. Um, we certainly don't want marijuana flowing into the state. Uh, 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 Joanna describes this as a public good. I'm, 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 I'm really trying to get my mind around the good. Uh, alcohol is not a public good. Uh, <laughs> smoking is not, tobacco is not a public good. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about something that is, uh, uh, that, isn't, that is not a public good. It takes the mind away from reality. Uh, we have a, we have a, we have a, a narcissistic, narcissistic culture, uh, uh, people sort of preoccupied with self, uh, um, avoiding reality. Um, uh, it's a means of avoiding reality. I suppose getting drunk is too, and, and that's, that's not a very good thing. The um, point is, I think we have to deal with the question of the public good um, and what would be the best thing for the state of Vermont. Now, I think it's obvious to everyone, as Nick has said, it's inevitable that marijuana is going to be legalized. Um, I would be opposed to that, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm out of the picture as far as that goes. Uh, now. Uh, the question is, how will it be made available? Um, uh, how will it be regulated? It has to be regulated. Would you agree? Absolutely. No, not, not just, just freely made available. Well, we can't solve all the problems tonight. No, I realize, I realize <laughs> that, but I... Uh, as much as I okay, would Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, but, but I, I, I just want to come back to the point that the VLCT policy has to do with, uh, with the conditional acceptance of legalization. And the question is, what are those conditions uh, and can they, can they be adequately addressed? Well, for I, I, in response to your concern about public good, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I am also acknowledging the results of the survey. Mm -hmm. And which is anecdotal. Agree? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, uh, I, it didn't. I would prefer to agree to that. Yes. yes. But, so I'm, I, I am getting, I am getting so. grief for, for anecdotal statements when and our supportive part of the community is claiming that this survey should be what we base our decision on, but it is also anecdotal. And we are quick to comment on, on the negative sides of the street's anecdotal evidence, but not on the positive side of the street's anecdotal evidence. It's not and really the same. A survey in anecdotal is not the same. Sorry. If, well, it's not a scientific survey. Well, we don't have time to debate it on it. If you'd like to 
close out your statements, uh, please. I, I agree with what Heather is saying, uh, but I think in the absence of public interest to the contrary, it behooves the board to look at the issue from the point of view of saying, okay, why is it bad? Not how do we deal with what presumably is bad. But see, I don't look at it that way. So I, I think I think you're making an assumption of what the board is thinking of whether it's good or bad, and I don't think all of us have indicated that we feel that way. So I hear what you're saying, but I don't really want to put that on my fellow board members that no, we all I, think I, it's bad. I, I don't want to do that either, but okay. the, the question of public good. Okay. Right. We, but again. But can I just ask, how does that relate to the question of conditional acceptance? That's the issue that we're, I mean, the issue that we're talking about is the current VLCT policy. And the current VL, VLCT policy doesn't express an opinion as to whether that marijuana is good or bad. It says if it's legalized, there should be adequate safeguards put in place. In other words, it should be properly regulated. But all, all adequate. Hmm? Well, I would agree with Susan that the all is, I mean, I, I, we, we could rewrite the statement, but, right. but the all is, uh, is, is a confusing term. I, 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 I have not, no problem with that. We're not taking on your, your portion of it. So I, we, I, we've I, got a small I don't have a dog in the race. Right. So I appreciate and, and your I'm thoughts, but. Trying to just present uh, an observation yeah. that I'm not sure that you're looking at it from the perspective of what's wrong as opposed to we can't accept it because something's wrong and we can't prove it's not wrong. Right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And, and all of this has been helpful. And I really appreciate the, the survey results as well. It's, um, it's definitely brought me into a different area of looking at it and thinking about it and trying to work through it. And, and it's not easy. I'm, all of us have, I've, I've watched all the board members struggle with this. Mm -hmm. So um, it hasn't been easy for us either. Um, but we appreciate your thoughts and sharing them with us. Let's go back to um, we that's voting our, for our delegates. This traditionally has been Kathleen, um, which I feel very comfortable with, but also um, I don't think she would, I don't know if someone else wanted to be able to take that to the VLCT or if we felt that we would like to continue supporting Kathleen in that role. Um, I'm okay either way. I don't think she'd mind if we traveled with her down there, but also that, that creates another travel for a board member, and I do trust her implicitly in this, so that's not an issue either. I'm comfortable with Kathleen. I am. Mm -hmm. I am. Nick and Is Brian? She, are you willing to go? Yes. Yeah, okay. see that was the, I was like, we should really ask her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's nice to ask. She did say yes. <laughs> um, so I'm looking for a motion to appoint our delegate. I'll move that we appoint uh, Kathleen, our town manager, as the voting delegate. Second. Second. Oh. And this is for the Vermont, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Thank you, Laura. And who was the second for that? Um, Victor, well, thank you. anyone else who would like to. Okay. Any other discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, aye. Thank you. Any aye. Thank you, Brian. Any opposed? All right. All in favor. No getting out of it, Kathleen. Um, so then let's take a look at um, our instructions for her. Um, I'm hearing several board members are open to possibly changing the language a little. Definitely no? taking out the word all. Taking out the word all. You guys are okay with that? Um, I think if you replaced the word all 
was adequate. Um, and just, um, um, but that would be too adequate. Yeah, no, no, I take that out yeah, too. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, do that either. Uh, so you had to read the marijuana should uh, should should be legalized um, only if um, adequate public safety, public health, and local regulatory and budgetary budgetary, which is obviously a very important part uh, because it's going to cost the town. Uh, I think that's one of the. Um, so, uh, can um, you phrase that again, please? Uh, I suppose, I, put, put something like this, um, that, that uh, marijuana should be legalized uh, for recreational purposes mm -hmm. um, only if adequate public safety, public health, and um, uh, local regulatory and budgetary concerns are addressed in the legislation. So we're going to in other words, the legislation. The but you added you added another strong word in replace of the all, so that's where you lost. Adequate, me. adequate. <laughs> He just, I moved, think, uh, he just he moved, moved the word. adequate. He just yeah. moved the adequate. He said, "Okay, from the should end be to the legalized." To the beginning. Okay. Why can't we just say marijuana should be legalized for recreational purposes if adequate public safety, health, and local regulatory and budgetary concerns are addressed That's in the legislation? And you're just moving the yeah, just moving the adequate. But I like, I like that in the in the in the legislation. Well, in the legislature, in the legislation, I mean, the le the legislature would draft a bill that would address those uh, those issues, so okay. that, in other words, we have one of the one of the concerns. Uh, suppose they legalize it and say say to the town, okay, uh, we want you to set up various kinds of regulatory boards, and uh, this is going to cost the town money. Uh, we want to see that these budgetary issues are addressed in the legislation so that we're not required to do something uh, that funds are not provided for. Okay. Let me think about that for a minute. Let me check with Nick and Brian and see how they feel about that. Uh, Nick first. Um, I was actually quite comfortable just removing the word all. <laughs> uh, but I don't see any problem. I want to make sure that, again, it's the public safety. But the regulatory is one of those items that I want to make sure is clearly um, put in because that's pl that becomes a planning and zoning issue as well. So um, uh, again, I'm all, but I would I would concur. I wouldn't have any problem with what Victor said. Okay, thank you, Brian. So I, I couldn't quite hear exactly what uh, you came up with, but I do agree that uh, a change in wording, removing all, is because. Uh, as I, as everyone, have been lobbied significantly on this subject, and the point has been made that if you put all in the statement, it does leave you uh, so that you can be ex really extreme in your lobbying efforts and not accept a reasonable solution. And so uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's incumbent upon on us if we're working to to uh, be reasonable to, to not make the all statement because uh, when when is everything ever solved? Okay. You know, at some point you have to make a bold move. But uh, that aside, uh, I do feel an obligation to ensure that the public safety, that the, the town's welfare and, and interests are preserved in any legislation that's enacted and so um, I think that you that you strike a good balance in removing the all um, and I'd want you to read me the statement if you're going to change the, the statement other than removing the all um, I do want to comment that uh, there was some discussion about the reduction in opioid deaths and the state of Vermont has already uh, legalized it for medical reasons and what I had read have read trying to educate myself on this is uh, that uh, 
by providing that for people that would otherwise be using op opioids, it has reduced the opioid deaths. And so I think the state has already enacted that. Uh, we're really talking about a different category of legalization. The other part uh, is the discussion about uh, economic development. And I have great, uh, I, I, I think if uh, our Lieutenant Governor is, is uh, striking Vermont's economic development on legalizing marijuana, then uh, he probably ought to go find another job because uh, it, it's not, you know, it will develop some, but uh, we have a lot of work to do on economic development. And, and if, if we're making decisions strictly on the dollars that uh, this could bring in, I think it's a poor rationale to, to make decisions. Uh, and so I, as much as anyone on the select board, serve the gain because you will have more farmers and they'll be buying more tractors. But that's not, I, I, I think you have to vote your conscience and what is right. And uh, what's right is for me to ensure that the town and the interests of the town are taken on, acknowledged, and dealt with before the legalization uh, is enacted. And I think that removing that all uh, does preserve the ability for reasonable legislators to negotiate and make uh, a, a very good decision something that will allow them to move forward. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Brian, could you and others um, support also eliminating the word only and leaving everything, at those two words, only and all, and, and just and keeping all the rest of the language? I think that could make a difference. Mm -hmm. So it would read, marijuana should be legalized for recreational purposes after public safety, public health, and local regulatory and budgetary concerns are adequately addressed. I like that. I like that too. Um, I would object to that. Um, if is a conditional term, only if, um, in other words, uh, what only if means simply that there are conditions that you, that need to be met. Uh, it needs to be regulated. So all you're saying is that um, uh, you would support the legalization of marijuana only if there are regulations. Would you support it without regulations? No, I don't think you would. Um, uh, just, just legalize it. In other words, we're, we're talking about conditions that need to be met uh, in order to protect uh, public safety, public health, and so on. I, I, I don't, I don't, I, the, the word if is, uh, um, uh, you can maybe remove I the. If. I'm just uh, all I did was take out the word. Oh. Only. Yeah, yeah, I realize that. So and it and it does. It says exactly what you're saying. Still, um, it's just. No, it doesn't. It doesn't completely talk. reframes it from it reframes it from you guys being from the VLCT being like oh we'll grudgingly allow this even though 70 percent of our state wants it. It reframes it in a much more neutral saying it should be legalized and here are the parameters that that will happen within. It's a very different thing to take that only out. Or out of that spot, you yeah. know. So uh, we could even, I guess, argue that we could, we could put it back in, but in a different spot, like you had suggested earlier. So oh. we could read it that way too. Um, the only problem I have with taking too many words and changing it too much, the, the, the shorter and quicker we make it, the more likely it will get picked up and, and moved on with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. The fewer changes we make, the more likely they'll say, okay, that's an easy thing that we could. So as much as I like to wordsmith it for us, I'm also aware that there's another layer that it has to go through. Okay. And, and the, the quicker we can make it, then the more accepting it might go to the next step. I would say that they're going to do what they want to do with it anyway. I understand, know, um, but that's what I'm thinking about. But that's all I'm thinking yeah. about. <laughs> I, think it still, I think it still keeps it pretty simple. Yeah, yeah, and I like just taking two words out or one word or something no. like that and not adding a lot more in. Okay. I, 
but I, as much as I admire your wordsmithing, you're yeah, very well, good well, that, Okay, so. uh, that's fine, but I think the only <laughs> should be left in for that because it makes it a condition. Okay. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a condition. All right, so it could read, marijuana should be legalized for recreational purposes only after public safety, public health, and local regulatory and budgetary concerns are adequately addressed. Okay. Yep. Oh, that, like that. that would be fine. I like that too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, well I, I only want to still, I still would prefer or feel like it, does, it isn't needed, but I could, I could so, with that. For the so it, if that you for say me. that you're, so I only want to see it legalized once we have the local regulatory control. That's right. right. That's a, it's a necessary so condition. If we aren't going to have local regulatory control, then I'm not going to be for legalization because we don't have control locally to deal with it. But this so is, it's a stance. It's not like it's not right. like this is. So the, I was actually agreeing with Victor yeah. okay, that great. I would <laughs> leave the only in there. Yeah. <laughs> because, because for that reason, I want yeah. to make yeah. sure the legis the you know the legislation says that we have control locally. So should the only be moved to that part of the sentence and only right. local, or like having it be that? How we have the only there is kind of like that's how we have it. That. How we have it right now is marijuana should be legalized for recreational purposes only after public safety, public health, and local regulatory and budgetary concerns are adequately addressed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Did you have? I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. I think it, it doesn't change a whole lot. Brian and Nick, real quick. I think that sounds fine. Okay, Brian? I, I'm uh, good with that. So. Okay. What did he say? He's good, good, good with that. Oh. Okay. Okay. The <laughs> second part of um, the policy, too, are there any other changes people want to make for that one that reads line four? In any discussion of marijuana legalization, identifying and addressing its impacts on cities, towns, and villages, including those on school populations, municipal first responders, municipal regulation, municipal regulations, and municipal budgets. So um, this is what the Vermont League of Cities and Towns supports that we're showing up for those discussions. I don't see any reason to change that. Sorry, I'm going to lose my voice in a minute. But I'm not sure if other board members feel differently. <coughs> No, you could argue that if it's there, why do what we just did with the other statement? Because it's, it's kind of subsumed there, but right. okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's participating in those discussions is how I look at it, which seems perfectly reasonable. It, well, right, because it's talking about uh, addressing the impacts okay. versus the funding for public safety. Mm -hmm. but, but it seems like just another way of saying it. All right. So I think we're I'm looking for a motion. Um, I can say it if people aren't too sure, but I don't know where for the whole thing, thing or, or we or? we need a motion to specify what those instructions are. Um, do you need the whole statement, Kathleen, or can we just I don't know. We move that. I'll, I'll, I'll try. Okay, go for it. Um, I move that we direct our delegate, Kathleen, to present um, the statement on marijuana legalization as follows. You know, so do we do that, mm. right? Do you so want to? Marijuana. So this would be, you'd marijuana. like me to propose an amendment an on amendment. the floor. On the floor. Of the town meeting. Of the town meeting. Of the annual meeting, sorry. The annual meeting. meeting. Stating that marijuana should be legalized for recreational purposes only after public safety, public health, and local regulatory and budgetary concerns are adequately addressed. Okay. No other changes. Second. Thank you. I realized I forgot to talk about, um, or is the board okay with um, submitting our survey results to the Vermont, sharing those with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns? It doesn't have to be officially on the floor or anything, but we could share that with them yeah. as well? Okay. okay. All right. Um, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Brian? Susan, just a point of clarification. Yes. Did you change it again? With, I, I missed, there was. No. Would you like me to read it to you? I would like you to read it to me, please. Okay. Marijuana should be legalized for recreational purposes only after public safety, public health, and local regulatory and budgetary concerns are adequately addressed. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? All right. That's it. Thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Susan, it is. I, I excused myself out of another meeting to uh, to join our, our meeting here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to need to excuse myself to get back to that. Thank you, Brian. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you all. We'll, we'll see you. Uh, Thank you. We'll next, see you when you get back. Time. Bye, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Are you going to stay with us, Nick? I am, Susan. Okay, great. Okay, so then we have the citizens' petition on Vermont gas e easements. Um, we have a special town meeting to warn to consider a citizens' petition regarding the approval of three easements on town owned land requested by Vermont Gas Systems. Kathleen, is there particulars you wanted us to address? Well, you will need to address the venue for the special town meeting tonight. Okay. And also uh, to confirm your approach to the special town meeting, whether it's going to be a floor vote or an Australian ballot per the select board's policy on citizens' petitions, which was in your packet. Our policy um, does call for an Australian ballot, but we do have the power to override that if we so wish is that correct yes okay does everyone understand that yes so let's take a look at venues first because that seems like the easier one but maybe it's not um yeah, so we have potential locations we have a, a chart that shows us a high school mm -hmm. the auditorium the high school cafeteria the regional ems the town office here or the town hall theater and I'm going to guess that our attendance is going to be more in the 75 to 100 range. So I, th I tend to think we, we probably could accommodate a meeting here on that if it gives us benefits for recording and mm -hmm. for saving expense. But I do see that the town office doesn't allow us to use a microphone. And yet, for those that are here tonight, you know, I don't know if that's an obstacle for us. Um, it's I'm, in, I'm inclined to go with the town office, but I can see that I could be swayed to a different venue if others feel strongly. Well, the about, other, about yeah, the only other place that would have that that's available would be the Middlebury Regional EMS. Is the only place that has the PA system um, that's available. Oh, sorry, Town Hall Theater, but then we'd have to that's charge. And that's. Well, it says that those are MCTV They're not can't do live broadcasts. But how important is live broadcast for this particular meeting? Right. It's. Well, we do tend to live broadcast um, town meetings. Yes. So. It would be dependent depending on how we, the vote is going to take place too. I mean, if it's a right. an Australian ballot, then 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 you could broadcast it, and and everyone could then hear it, and who couldn't come and right. and right. make up their minds. Whereas if you have the vote at the meeting, um, broadcasting it wouldn't allow people who are just staying home and listening to to participate in the vote right. uh, I suppose uh, so the two sort of hang together really where you have it and, mm -hmm. and um, well neither the auditorium or the cafeteria at the high school are available on November 6th so I guess that we have to think about a different day if we wanted to have it there I'm not sure that we have that option right go ahead Heather so in a response to thinking about town meeting for March, I did inquire about Mary Hogan um, and did talk to Sue uh, there about, not for this particular date, but for town meeting. And 
I did talk to Kurt, and he seemed to think that we could do live broadcast there. They would have to run a cord um, maybe from the band room, mm -hmm. but he said it was a possibility. So could, could we consider that a potential? Excuse me, is it, do we have to pick a location tonight? It's some, some time frame wise of warnings? So you have to sign the warning by October 6th, sign and post the warning? When's our next meeting? The uh, October 10th. October 13th. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, you can work with me on this. Could they select um, Mary Hogan as a first choice pending verification that it's available? And then designate a second choice if it's not. Is that okay? Um. No. Nope. Apparently not. We don't email vote so, usually. So, so why can't we start going on the of this? What's the problem? The, the size. Just uh, seventy-five. Feet. We're just we don't know who's going to show up. That if we have say a hundred and thirty people show up, then we can't accommodate them. So it's going to be maximum seventy-five. Don't have a sound system here. Right. So mm -hmm. people to hear each other. Mm -hmm. That's the other. Plus the two obstacles. Yeah. So let, let's yeah, even assume that we may not get more than 75 because we hear each other mm -hmm. in our testimonies. And that may be important. Yes, I think it's important that mm -hmm. people can hear each other. And uh, I like the idea of re regional EMS, but if it is Australian ballot um, and we don't have a live broadcast, then people don't know the issues to be able to vote. They only can go by the mm -hmm. newspaper. So that's it's eliminating the people who would normally watch it that night. So that's a rough one. Um, but again, we have aware as well that early voting will start. Right. People will start voting before they do that. I understand. So, so does Barry Hogan has MTTV right there? Yes. Mary Hogan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so that would be. That a first and yeah. We'll that. yeah. I think so. Yeah. We don't Kay. have any other choices. Well, we so do, but what, not good ones. What is our second choice then? The top. Here, here, here. We'll yell. <laughs> Um, but I, th I'm basing this off of that I would like the Australian ballot. So I have a portable speaker <laughs> that comes with a microphone. <clears throat> we couldn't bring that in and use that to. We have. <laughs> we are currently in trials with a PA system here okay. that the recreation department has. The question is getting it to interact with the MCTV so there's not feedback. Yeah. Uh, for the listeners at home. Sometimes it can create quite mm -hmm. the, the home nightmare. Of that was our initial right. trial. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. okay. So it sounds like first choice is Mary Hogan, second choice is here, working on the PA system here. So the question would be, um, would we like to go with the policy of the Australian ballot or change that to voting just on the floor? You have election day the next day, right? So mm -hmm. it's not like you're having to set up an extra. Is there any downside to doing Australian ballot because you, you have election day the next day? Downside. I mean, obviously, you can get more people participating if you do Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. I guess overall, I would question that the board has put a policy in place. They met to discuss and putting a policy in place that when a petition came to them, they would automatically do it by Australian ballot unless <coughs> the petitioners themselves requested that oh, okay. in an evening meeting. And so I would question overriding that okay. when it comes to yeah. I mean, the other Is there a reason to override your own policy now? Okay. So let's my, with Australian. my other concern is, is if we had to go with our second choice and we have to limit the number of people who can be here and we're then holding a voice vote, I would 
That would I, be awful. Yeah. 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 So I would, I would support Australian ballot. Yeah, okay. I think so. And there is some cost to the town to do that, to provide the ballots and the counting and everything. But we're yeah. doing it. We're doing it anyway. Right. So we it's will, be we will be able to do it right here tomorrow. We'll start early voting. They say October 18th. It's a yes no vote. If it will go very quickly, we might have some additional hours to pay people, but it's not going to be. It's not a significant, right? Okay. We're not going anywhere to set up. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah. Nick, Nick, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yes, there's no more thing with the Australian ballot. Okay. Is there, Ross, is there anything else you wanted to add to the conversation? The only thing I point out is that over 400 people signed the petition. Um, so I think your guesstimate of 75 people showing up may be on the low side. Okay. But if they don't have to vote at the meeting, then they might just come and vote the next day, too. So I don't oh, know. Yeah, I mean, that's true. No, it gives everybody. <laughs> right. Kind of that's, that's great. I'm just talking about for the information meeting that we're discussing. Okay. So you, anticip in you anticipate more than 75. It's a good reason for okay. the Australian ballot, too. Right. Yeah. Think, yes, yeah. it is. Right. So we don't, I mean, but the most capacity in our choices is the auditorium, and it's not available on the 6th, right. which means we'd have to schedule it at a different time, which means we'd have to have the vote at a different time, which means that would cost more. You mean the Mary Hogan? No, no, the auditorium, the high school auditorium. If, if, if we were trying to accommodate all 400 petition signers mm -hmm. we don't even have an option to do that so well, but it's usually a Monday and then the voting is on a Tuesday it doesn't right. have to be though right no more six on Monday. does it yeah you don't have to have the informational <laughs> meeting the, the day before voting you don't have to have it the day And I do like keeping with tradition so it doesn't become a weird thing <coughs> that people show up the one night because they thought it was that and we did something very different. Mm -hmm. So, On the first Tuesday in November is a very known time for voting. Right. Yeah. Yes. Let's yeah. use, the reason for encouraging use the momentum that we have. <laughs> okay. Well, that would ensure we have probably have the best turnout. Right. Yeah. So we're talking about the Mary Hogan Auditorium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's our first choice. There is an, an audit. There is a cafeteria. Oh, well, the cafeteria. The Jimmy Cafetorium. Yeah, the Jimmy Cafetorium, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, Why there's... <laughs> that's what it's called, man. But it must be able to accommodate at least what the high school cafeteria can accommodate, mm -hmm. I would say. That's a pretty large question. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for a motion um, to warn the special town meeting. Anybody like to take that one on? Uh, let's see. Where is it? Where are we? Very behind. I'll move that on. <laughs> okay, here you are. Okay, that we warrant a special town meeting on Monday, November 6th at 7 p.m. at Mary Hogan. Well, nope. No. Don't just go. On to consider the citizen's petition regarding three requested Vermont gas systems easements on town owned land followed by Australian ballot voting on Tuesday, November 7th. Second. Okay. And okay. we are setting the first choice is Mary Hogan, second choice is here in the town offices. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. Okay. So next up we have Jordan Benjamin, um, the CFO from Aqua Bike regarding um, their application for tax stabilization. Hi Jordan. Good evening. Would you like to take us through what you're proposing or? I'm happy to as you see fit. This is okay. what one we need to do. Okay, we're running kind of behind on time so we're hoping to condense things but I don't want to squeeze out your time either. You put a lot of work into your application. Well, I certainly want to be available to answer your questions tonight. Um, if you've had a chance to read <coughs> through it, I'm open to that. But um, I'm happy to generally, I took, we took a look at the town of Middlebury tax stabilization policy. And within that, um, based on the existing commercial uh, 
um, and industrial enterprises, the town is authorized to grant tax stabilization um, to, to businesses, property taxes in Middlebury. Um, so we're requesting a <coughs> growing business that um, part of our property taxes are reduced for five years. And that's within this application. We feel that the purpose of this tax stabilization, we, we generally fall into, if not all, the majority of the five criteria based on the community goals that are set in this, in this document. For me, I've, I've been on the board for a while and haven't run into this before, so it's it's definitely new for me. I'm sure it's new for our other board members. Have you actually I, considered I've, this? Uh, uh, there, the have been, there have been requests made, yes, in yeah. the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I wound up asking about the um, revolving loan funds that we had condition that we had sort of supported going through and found out that that, that hasn't gone through for you. So that was a surprise to me. Um, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure how to how to how we're even going to evaluate this because it's been something that we haven't, as a board, had to deal with before, and because we were looking at the revolving loan fund before. Is that something that you are still interested in? If we could get that together. From what I understand of the revolving loan fund and Kathleen Ramsey, the town manager, may have more details on that, but I believe Addison County Economic Development Corporation wanted to help oversee the underwriting and administration of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are still open to that loan, but it wasn't something that we chose to pursue right away. We had kind of gone down one path uh, here with the town. We had, I think, a committee the Economic Development Committee get Middlebury approve it or initially approve it. We had this board, I think, approve it pending the Economic Development Committee approving. And then we heard that ACEDC was getting involved. And so it just went down a path of, you know, we're okay. focusing on brewing healthy organic beverages. And this was, you know, there are other loans as well. Right. So to answer your question, we're still interested, but um, we're definitely interested in this. and to help you evaluate it, you know, I'm here to answer your questions or right. to expedite it in any way. I'm happy to do that. I just, I think for us internally, we need a little bit more in place in order to be able to do that. You looked like you had your hand going up, Heather. Well, I agree. I just, I did have some questions, um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe, I, I don't know. Do you want me to ask my questions? Sure. I, I mean, you were part of the sort of economic development. I mean, we we were going to have a committee that would sort of review these, help us review these kind of things, and we have not had um, good luck assembling people to serve on such a committee. Yes, um, and we we don't ha we don't currently have all of the guidelines, application, et cetera, in place for a revolving loan fund. Yeah, that's my concern: is that we're not really prepared to. We put together a great application. We're not exactly prepared to be able to review it based on we're in transition with our policies and with our economic development and everything else. And so I don't want to put you off again. Um, but at the same time, I'm just not sure if we're prepared tonight to look at it. Um, why don't you ask your questions, Heather, though? OK. Please come here. So I, my help. first question was, had we done this before? Are there businesses currently that have this in place? Because one thing I, I like to consider is equity. You know, are, are we being, mm -hmm. I don't want to tell somebody no when we've told somebody yes, and, and I don't know what the history is. So some kind of history would be helpful for me. There was so, one about, what, seven or eight years ago, I think. Uh, but. Uh, it was sort of a one-time shot. I don't know. Uh, you're asking for a five-year? Correct. Uh, under the stabilization, you, there's one to five years or five to ten years. Okay. And, and for the total amount? Correct. That's right. Go ahead, Kathleen. Well, I, I'm not sure what 
the to I, I suppose the total amount would be the total property taxes that we pay. I'm not sure what the the, the total property tax that comes to the town from, okay. from yeah, yeah. You gave us the, um, the the yearly amount, and that amount for five years would be like ninety two thousand four hundred dollars. That's not that. So, go ahead, Kathleen. So. We had a couple back in the 90s. Okay. And that, I believe they were on the machinery and equipment right. of the businesses, particularly when businesses were acquiring um, new equipment <coughs> to ask for some stabilization of that tax so they could make that investment um, at the time. And that's what I remember, that it was tied in with the machine and equipment tax. So I had done the numbers like Susan just stated, and so my initial concern from a budget and infrastructure perspective is we're constantly squeezing, you know, and my fear is if we give a business this kind of break, uh, who's going to pick up the tab and does it then go to the residents? You know who who picks up the difference because are we we're not necessarily going to be able to reduce the town budget by ninety thousand over five years if anything it's going to go up so, so who picks up that difference who and I think it's unfair to ask the residents rate to increase how many people are you employing forty two as of today so I, I don't know it's tough. I mean, how do you balance economic? Yeah. I think it, not having any history, not having any policy, just gut feeling for me right at the moment mm -hmm. is that zero is too much. I might consider something somewhere in between. I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm concerned. In other words, um, as Kathleen said, um, tax stabilization, when you have a specific need that you need to fund, and this provides you with an opportunity to do that so that you can go on, uh, what you're asking simply uh, reducing the tax town rate to zero for five years for a property is um, Really, really, I think defeats the purpose of having businesses open in town. And in other words, that they 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 increase our our revenues, and um, it looks more like a, a policy of just saying, well, you know, obviously you 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 do bring a benefit to town. I think you make a very fine product. Um, I'm I'm happy that you employ people and they're well paid, and I think this is important uh, for our town and. Uh, <coughs> Um, these are all benefits, but uh, there's a sense in which, um, like it or not, we have a we have a property tax policy, and that's where our a, a bulk of our revenue comes from. And, and simply, uh, what happens after the next five years? <laughs> in other words, after five years, then uh, I mean, I just don't like the idea of saying, well, we'll we'll we'll. Um, um, just excuse certain business, um, even though we want you to grow, obviously, um, and to remain here. Um, uh, I think it's um, it, it sets a precedent that would be very hard to um, to work against. Uh, I think. I, I think. Sorry. I think for me. I'm about process, and I think we're sort of lacking on the process at the moment. So let me, I would like to put. Let me address there yeah. before, before your question. Sure, just hang on one second. But I do want to, I don't want to forget about Nick, too. But I I think we we might wind up asking a whole lot of questions and be going, it's it's our policy, and I think we're, we might be stuck into going by our gut tonight instead mm. of by process and I would much rather <coughs> put the brakes on and go by process and then see how everybody feels about things. I think it'll work out better for you and for us if we do that. Are you willing to um, have us readdress it back in October 10th? And then that gives us a chance to sort of take that step back and make sure that we're putting you through a good process where you can answer questions and not um, 
I just think we're putting you in an awkward spot tonight. And I, I really don't want to continue that if we don't have to. Oh, thank you. And to answer your question directly, yes, there should be a process. So I think I would, we can be fine with that. Yeah. But to get back to uh, Go ahead. your concerns, I mean, they're valid concerns. It's, uh, it's a debate that goes on here. I've heard it before. It goes on in, in every state and nationally. How can we, how can a city you know, encourage the next Amazon office to go to their city, reduce taxes, bring in new jobs, new growth. This is on a much smaller scale, but we're asking, yes, we have <coughs> companies in Middlebury right now that are growing at 50% year over year growth, and we could use the help because we've taken over this facility. And if you would like specifics in an application or in your process that you determine, I can give you specifics of where that money would go. Some of it would go to hiring, and some of it would go to new equipment so that we could be efficient so that we could pay higher salaries. You know, it, it goes around and around, but but cert certainly your concern is valid, and it's up to this board to decide what sort of incentives do we want to have for businesses. And although this is old, this is one where the board felt it was necessary that under some circumstances, and this may be one, where taxes can be reduced to increase jobs and eventually increase the tax base so that in five years when this is over, we're going to have 150 employees and we'll be the next Vermont Heart Cider. That is not just giving back to people paying property taxes where they own houses here, but there's, I think, still a 1% tax rate for sales here in Middlebury and then all the other incidentals, anc ancillary things that happen when you bring a healthy organic beverage into downtown Middlebury. Okay, Go ahead, Heather. Just quickly, would you consider modifying the application to consider one year at a time and or would you consider modifying the application to have a graduated so we aren't looking at you know could we consider zero for a year and reevaluate in a year or could we consider you know could a gradual backup my concern is you know i sit in infrastructure committee meetings you know every month and we're struggling you know, we want to we want to fund a library, you know, and and I just I'm trying to balance supporting you and doing the things we need to do at the same time. So I'm wondering if you wouldn't be willing to modify your request to to accommodate some of that a little bit, recognizing that if you want good employees, we have to provide good services in town for them to want to live here also. And so it's a it's a balance. We all we have to balance as best we can on both sides, so. For our financial planning and budgetary, which I'm sure you can all you know, acknowledge, um, to have something graduated, we'd be more you know, acceptable to that than, than not knowing what's gonna happen in the year and have to come before here again to you know, budget out in five years. Okay. I just wanna see real quick if Nick has anything he wants to add. Well, I'll listen to this. Uh, Part, part of it is I, I, I think we need to think about this more because my, my head's deflating after the, uh, the marijuana discussion, um, and that's been a lot of my thought. But um, I'm appreciative of the fact, and I'm really glad that Uncle Vaiti is in Middlebury. Um, it, it fits in really well with our business community. Um, and if it's strictly from their perspective, I, I see where they're coming from. What I have to think about, though, is this fairness issue of um, how does it impact the other businesses and the non-business, the residential taxpayers in town? Because, I mean, part of the reason, I mean, the, the reason why Middlebury's taxes are what they are is because we honestly offer really, really good services, whether it's in recreation or public safety or in our public works, and everyone benefits from that, and those costs you know, whether we like it or not, I can continue to go up. Um, I wish we could have cost stabilization, but we can't. And uh, so I, I need to really think about this one in deeper um, issue of not only how it affect Aqua Vitae, but <clears throat> what are the other businesses who may in fact ask for similar scenarios. And then we start seeing um, diminishing um, uh, revenue, even though we're continuing to see cost increases and we have to therefore pass those cost increases on to the others. So I like the idea of holding off on this decision right now. 
So, so I just want to say I'm also <clears throat> grateful that you're here and that you, you have a great product and that we appreciate you know the, the contribution you're making to the services we're talking about. And it is a difficult um, situation, so maybe we can make, make, get, come to some compromise. Yeah. Let's come up with a better evaluation process and, and come back in October. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. I, I'd just like to understand when or how I can learn of the process that you develop so that I can aid you in that process and answer questions. And if you know, Mr. Mova would like to see specific uses of those funds, I can provide that to you prior to another meeting. Well, right. We'll be working closely with Kathleen, and, and I'm sure we can we can provide Kathleen with the questions that we have, and she'll make sure that you have those, and, and that'll be part of it. So, um, so. She's your contact, and she's our contact. So let's let's go okay. break, and we'll figure it out and come back. Thank you for your time. Sounds I appreciate good. it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So next up, we have authorizing um, the signature for the letter of collaboration with Vermont Urban and Community Forestry Program for the Town Forest Recreation Planning Community Assistance Program. Ooh, that's a name. <laughs> um, so we're looking at authorizing Kathleen to sign a letter of collaboration. Do we need any information for that? Did anyone want to speak to that, Kathleen, or is it just? I don't know if there's anybody here for this. This okay. is what the uh, select board had approved for town forest planning. Mm -hmm. There isn't any money changing hands. It's more about town staff support and town volunteer support. Right. Um, for the staff person from the urban and community forestry program so are there any questions and if not then a motion would be in order to authorize Kathleen can make a motion. that would be great for Ron. so I would like to make a motion to authorize town manager Kathleen Ramsey to sign a letter of collaboration in regard to the town's participation in the town forest recreation planning community assistant program second thank you Heather any discussion all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Then we already did the authorization for the signature <coughs> of easements. Um, and then we get to Dan, who's out in the hallway. Come on in, Dan. <laughs> we have a whole bunch of public works things. Oh Let's bang them out. All right. We're, we're only behind by half an hour. <laughs> Okay, you want to do uh, water and wastewater budget? Let's, let's do the water budget first. Right. Okay, so um, uh, I'm assuming you have water budgets in your packets. Yes, we do. We do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, so the first <coughs> item is to approve the fiscal 18 <coughs> water budget. It's uh, $1,233,346. Is that right? Yeah, a couple extra dollars in there. Right? Yeah, yes. there's lots of dollars. <laughs> uh, including capital expenses of $235,310. Um, some of the highlights are uh, inflationary increases in personal expenses. Um, per personnel? Personnel expenses. <laughs> like Sorry. Um, and the addition is a first interest payment on the final, final drawdown of the $1 million uh, bond that was approved by voters in 2010. Um, so we also are going to increase um, infrastructure, water infrastructure, ex uh, capital expenses um, by 23310 to go from $212 to $235, $235,310. Um, so that is the gist of the budget. <coughs> we also, um, as part of that, were the select board approved the infrastructure committee's request to seek planning advance loan funding for engineer for water system improvements on Exchange Street and Route 7 South. So that's coming down the pike too. Right. So I'll make a motion to approve the proposed FY18 water fund budget of $1,233,346 as recommended by the infrastructure committee. A second. Thank you, Farhad. Um, any discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Wastewater. Uh, <coughs> the proposed FY18 <coughs> wastewater budget is $2,537,900. It includes capital expenses of $348,000. $59. Um, <clears throat> the infrastructure voted to recommend the adoption of the budget to the select board. Um, <clears throat> again, some of the drivers were inflationary increases in wages and benefits were offset by decreases in operating supplies for treatment plant and biosolids handling <coughs> and service contracts for biosolids handling. Um, this budget includes, as I said earlier, $348,059 for capital improvements. Um, some of those projects include the wastewater department's share for the Chipman Park South Street project, which is underway today. today. Engineering for the sanitary sewer evaluation study and the CSO, the combined sewer overflow um, effort. Um, we will also use some of the funds for preliminary planning for the 20 year upgrade of the wastewater plant uh, facility and uh, some also engineering and construction for the Charles Avenue uh, project, which will be next summer. Mm -hmm. um, and engineering for pump station upgrades for station nine, which is Waybridge area, and pump station 13, which is Halpin Road area. So requesting the board approve the FY18 wastewater budget for $2,537,900. I'll make a motion that we um, approve the FY18 wastewater budget of $2,537,900 as recommended by the Infrastructure Committee. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Victor. Um, any discussion? Yes. Um, so, uh, noted in the review of the check warrants that there was a spike in the electric for the wastewater treatment facility. And I was curious about that and whether we're needing to do any equipment correction. Are you aware of it? You know, um, mm -hmm. So this month, the electric bill was $31,547. And last month, this was 19875 But the previous months before that, it was like half that. So it's a huge spike, I think. All right. We can find that out. Okay. Let you know. it was because it's been dry, so I'm not sure why we wouldn't Let's see find out. Yeah. a spike in the electric. I don't know. Okay. That's a good question. I'm glad we're planning for the future. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but like the library, I don't know if we have something that we need to take care of. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay. Okay. That's it. Any other? Okay. Um, so all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Uh, water rates. We have a separation between in town and out of town. Let's take the in town first. Do you want me to talk about it or? It's whatever. Um, basically, we met um, and to raise the additional revenue needed to balance out the water budget, um, the infrastructure committee recommended eliminating the 3,000 gallons of usage included in the base rate while maintaining the FY17 base charge of $35.52 per, per quarter and the FY17 usage charge of $3.04 um, $3 per 1,000 gallons. I'm not sure if anybody had any questions about that. It's different for out of town, but we can break it out and do the different recommendations. So is that an increase? It, it would be because it's eliminating the 3,000 gallons base price. Base yeah. price. Um, we it ends up being on 10,800 gallons of usage, um, $9 a quarter, yes. uh, roughly about $9 a quarter. Right. If you use the full 3,000 gallons, right. if you use less than that. It would be, yes. Well, it's just, and that's assuming uh, 10,800 yep. gallon usage, yep. which is what? It's been determined as kind of like an average usage, correct? Or people right. in the household. Yeah. And these rates um, cover the budgets that we are just looking at, but the infrastructure committee is planning um, a meeting in November to just talk about 
our philosophy and how we're going to handle increased rates over the next couple of years um, in order to cover costs that are increasing and sure. have the water and wastewater pay for itself. But that, you know, it's these kind of questions. Do you want to eliminate the base rate? Do you want to increase this? There's a million different ways you can do it. So we're going to come up with our philosophy. So moving forward, we don't have to wonder about how we feel about it each time we have to do with this. We will have a, hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, a theory and uh, a way to move forward together. Right? Well said. Excellent. <laughs> Any other questions? So I'm looking for uh, a motion. A motion to approve the FY18 water base rate charge of $35.52 per quarter with no water usage included in the base rate charge and the usage rate of $3.04 per thousand gallons effective at the start of the first, excuse me, the fourth billing quarter of 2014. Ah, oh, she excuse me. Seventeen. <laughs> Second. I guess Years I can't talk. Everywhere. <laughs> all right. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. And um, although the infrastructure committee didn't address the issue of out-of-town rates, we do have out-of-town um, customers in New Haven and Weybridge, and so this is prepared to address their charges sort of prorated based on what their charges are slightly different, but it's taking the same philosophy and applying it to their rates. So right. the 3,000 gallons per user is eliminated and the uh, per quarter charge, base charge, and the user rate stays the same. Exactly. So, so same thing, but just slightly different rates. Sorry. Go for it, Heather. I'll make a motion to approve the FY18 water base rate charge of 42, excuse me, $40.52 per quarter with no water usage included in the base charge and the usage rate of $3.85 per thousand gallons for out of town customers effective at the start of the fourth billing quarter of 2014. Ah, 17, okay. I did it again. Oh. I'm like three years behind. Okay. Second. <laughs> Thank you. All right, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And thank you, Nick. Any opposed? Maybe somebody should make the next one. Something okay. else. Well, I just want to keep hearing you say it again. Wastewater. Wastewater, sewer rates. Um, so we decided to recommend um, maintaining the wa wastewater rates at the same level in FY17 of a base charge of $39.60 per quarter. Um, including the 3,000 gallons of usage. We didn't eliminate it in this case. And it has a usage rate of $7.78 per 1,000 gallons above the 3,000 gallons, including the base charge. Love how confusing that sounds out loud. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> any questions? Well, what's the reason for the different So the wastewater budget uh, did not need any additional revenue and knowing that we're getting into the whole philosophy discussion, okay. we didn't want to change the rates uh, very much. Um, if we were if we were good, then we should stay good until after we have the philosophy. Okay. All right, I'll move it. Unless you, did you, you have more? No. Hmm? Okay. Did you want to do it? Sure. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> so I would like to make a motion to retain the same wastewater rates as in FY17, the base charge of $39.60 per quarter with 3,000 gallon per quarter included in the base <coughs> charge and the usage rate remaining at $7.78 per 1,000 gallons, the 3,000 gallons included in the base charge effective at the start of the fourth billing quarter for 2017. Second. Thank you, Victor. Um, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? All right, thank you. And then um, out of town, um, we didn't address it out of town, but applied it the same way. Um, basically the, the same thing. Do you want to do it again, Farhad? Okay. So I would like to make a motion to retain the same wastewater rates as in FY17 for out-of-town users with a base charge of $39.60 per quarter 
with 3,000 gallons per quarter included in the base charge, and the user's rate remaining at $7.78 per 1,000 gallons, effective at the start of fourth billing quarter for 2017. All right, second. Thank you, Laura. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thanks, Nick. Um, any opposed? All right. Septage disposal rate. <laughs> you want to talk about this one? Sure. Um, infrastructure Committee asked Bob Wells, the wastewater superintendent, to do a review of the disposal um, charges for septage that is taken at the plant. Um, Bob recommended to the committee uh, to increase the per gallon rate for septage disposal from $0.09 cents to $0.11 cents per gallon and that the rate for field day septage be increased from $0.03 cents to $0.04 cents per gallon. This will um, boost wastewater revenue by about $15,000 on an annual basis. And that's reflected in the revenue stream for the, for the budget <coughs> that you just adopted. So we need a motion to adopt those charges. Okay. I'll make a motion uh, to increase the septage disposal rate from $0.09 cents to $0.11 cents per gallon and the field day's disposal rate from $0.03 cents to $0.04 cents per gallon, effective January 1, 2018. All right. Is there a second? Second. Victor? Victor wins. All right. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Winter Sand Bid Award. Um, <clears throat> Bill Kernan, our Director of Operations, received two bids <coughs> from local suppliers for, <coughs> excuse me, winter sand. Um, they had them, had them both tested, and uh, you can see in the memo, do you have the memo? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Carreras price is $9.25 per ton. Uh, their sand and gravel is tested at 96.2%, 90, <coughs> and uh, the calculated actual cost per ton is $9.62. Champlain's price was $12.75 per ton. Uh, their sand and gravel is tested at 98.7%. The, the calculated actual cost per ton is $12.92. Uh, the reason we could provide those, uh, those calculated actual costs is that you are paying, that is the actual cost of the sand in the mix. Uh, but what you're proving tonight is the quality price of, uh, for uh, uh, J.P. Carrera and Sons for $9.25 per ton. So I'm looking for a motion. I'll make a motion to award the contract for winter sand for the 2017-18 season to J.P. Carrara at a quarter price of nine dollars twenty-five cents per ton. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Heather. Um, any discussion? Yes. So, it, how does that compare to last year? It's exactly what it was last year. Well, I know. Curious. Yeah. Um, and will we be buying the same amount or a different amount? Uh, buy the ton so we have the choice. Yeah, we usually we get two loads, like two purchases, some in, in, in November, December, mm -hmm. and then if we need more, we get some in, in February. How have we been doing? Um, I think last year we were doing well until the end of the season. You needed to get more? We, we did. We usually do. And the reason for that is that when the, when the contract or supply breaks open this pile in, the, in mid winter, you get out underneath the frozen material and you get that get that loose material out and deliver to you. So that's why we do a mid winter, late winter uh, purchase. Okay, thank you. That's yeah. it. That's great. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. Paving of Mill Street parking lot. Sure. <clears throat> um, I had an uh, initial quote from uh, DNF Paving for uh, <clears throat> $14,760 to pay a portion of the parking lot. And then after we got into this a little bit, we figured out where all some of our other uh, expenses were. Uh, there was going to be enough money, I hoped, to pay the entire parking lot. So I went back to DNF and said, uh, give me a price for doing the whole parking lot. And that price is 27000 Ninety dollars. Um, you have a memo from me that kind of outlines that. Um, I do need to correct the first sentence. The parking lot grant for this award for this project is fifty-three thousand nine hundred 
thousand six hundred. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> but I'm requesting you to approve DNF uh, excavation, excavation and paving bid for twenty-seven thousand ninety dollars, and that will pay the entire cost. And it's following the grant budget. And after that work, there'll be thirty-three hundred ninety dollars left. So you'll be the check. So we hadn't had a chance to ask questions on infrastructure. So I just wondered, are they, we do need, we do have a time limit on when we need to use these funds. December 31st. And we're getting into busy paving season. Yes. Are they going to be able to do it? Yes. Okay. Yes. And they've confirmed that? Yes. Okay. Good. They would not have given me a price if they couldn't do okay. it. Okay. I've just, I've just heard that. Yep. That's what I did you, did you have another idea for the money? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I yes. just, I just, I didn't. I knew we, I knew we had to use the money by the mm -hmm. end of the year, and I was afraid if they couldn't actually get it done that we should consider an alternative. But if they're going to get it done and we have the money, good. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, with these um, proposals, they estimate based on quantity how much, how much tonnage they're going to use. We actually pay them on the cost per ton. The cost per ton equates to eighty-eight dollars. So when we get the, the receipts, that's what we take. Okay. What we, what we got around. So who wants to do the motion? I'll move that we uh, award a contract for paving the Mill Street parking lot to D and F excavating and paving for a total cost of twenty seven thousand and ninety dollars. I'll second. Thank you, Farhad and Laura. Um, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Nick. Um, any opposed? All right. Nice Can job. I just make one request. The, the small balance that's left, given that we have to use that, we have to use it or we lose it, right? Yeah. Can we talk about an infrastructure, what else we might be able to do down there with that? Or have well, you? My thought was to do some signs. Okay. For the parking lot. So you already um, have spiffed it up a you little bit, and nice. we have to do line striping um, okay. down there. Okay. Okay. So it would be I just want to take advantage of yeah. that money down there, and if you've already got plans for it all, good. We okay. really have done some nice plantings down there, and the lighting looks nice as well. Good. Thank you, and thanks for all the stuff. It's nice to get all those water and wastewater budgets out of the way. So. Yay, thank you. <laughs> That's a very busy yeah. stretch. Yep. <laughs> All right, Mr. Frieden, you are up to talk, uh, give a report from the library, Ilsley Library Trustees Public Forum on Building Needs. There's a copy for each of you. I think there's a copy for each of you. Okay. Susan. Thank you. Oops, wait. So if you want to get up and stretch, feel free to do that. We'll wander around the building. <laughs> sitting here a long time. Yes, we have, haven't we? Yeah. Well, thank you for all your small work tonight and uh, for the past, and thanks for letting me uh, come and speak with you. I want to do two things. I want to report on the meeting that we, the public meeting that the library trustees held on September 13th. And I want to speak with you briefly about what happens next. Our meeting was excellent. It had a, we had a thoughtful discussion. It was superbly moderated by Ken Perrine, and I think everybody learned things. First, the trustees and building committee reported that there had been no architectural or structural change at Ellsley in 30 years. That the Library Building Committee had been working three and a half years and had 30 meetings, during which time the trustees had also had over 20 meetings, and the staff had spent countless hours helping. The trustees had written a new mission statement and a new long-range plan, both of which guided the work of the Building Committee and the architect. Despite the internet and digitization of, of printed materials, circulation has doubled since 1988 when the most recent edition was built. We now 
host 170,000 persons a year. Among libraries with similar budgets, we are the first in the state of Vermont in visit circulation, program attendance, and computer usage. <clears throat> 10 years ago, the library made a space study and found that the library needed 5,500 additional square feet. Our proposal is for just under 6,500. The children's area is too small. It has no dedicated space for teens or preschoolers, little natural light, no ventilation, the threat of mold, 15 steel posts that obscure the sight of the children, and it is 17 steps away from an unobserved open entrance. The committee considered expanding the children's library into the community room, and also, the possibility of moving it into the adult stacks of the 88 edition and the reference reading room of the 88 edition. Doing that would still, even building a floor over the second story of the reference room, would still leave us 1,200 feet short of what we need. The heating, ventilating, and air conditioning system is inefficient, ineffective, likely to fail, and has no mechanical ventilation. The community room, which is very heavily used, is too small, has a too low a ceiling, an unobserved entrance, and is inflexible. The elevator is at the end of its life. The staff refuses to go into it. They put the books into it, push the button, and walk up the stairs because they don't want to get caught in between floors. There are no restrooms on the first or second floors. The two restrooms on the basement are misused and deteriorated. The outside front steps are inaccessible for seniors and parents with strollers. The computer users must work in an area where they interfere with other library users. We hired engineers who determined that the building is sound but structurally inflexible, and that the systems of heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, electricity, technology, and plumbing are near failing or outdated, and we received a proposal to save the garden. Our architect, Tom Bachman, reported on the challenges posed to the library about having such a small plot of land and how that influenced the, the choices that he had to make. He explained how the 88 edition cannot be reconfigured and lacks sufficient space for the children's library. I'm glad to explain that to you so you can really understand what that means if you want me to, but I know it's late. The proposal that Bachman Gossens Architects made meets all the goals of the trustees in the building committee. But it cannot be built, made or built in incremental stages. The floor plan, which I think you've seen because it was in the report you received, is merely an illustration of one way to accommodate the library's functions. There's been no decision made on where particular activities will finally be placed. For example, the children's library, the, re the reading areas, the staff, staff offices. There's been no choice of materials and no design even proposed for the exterior of the new wing. The wing is designed to be for maximum flexibility so that it can accommodate future changes in library services. And it is planned to be already so efficient that making it net zero should not be too big a challenge. The audience made some very good suggestions. One, it was clear that the audience wanted a net zero building and solar power. Some people said that it seems to cost a lot and asked how the project would affect taxes. But no one raised an objection to removing the 77 or 88 additions or to the library's needs. Many offered their support. They said the needs are clear and the plans look good. 
Some thought the staircase was too grand and that there was too much open space. Importantly, I think everyone or many people clearly said that Ilsley is not only Middlebury's library. Adults and children from surrounding towns depend on it. It provides free programs and meeting spaces to all, regardless of their residencies. The only things that are charged for to anyone who comes into the library are photocopying and checking out printed video or audio materials. We don't unfortunately keep statistics on the number on the residences of people, young people who participate in our children's programs. We do know that in the summer children's programs, one half of the children come from towns other than Middlebury. The audience felt that Middlebury should seek input and support from these surrounding towns. Laura, I believe, suggested the possibility of having covered parking for bicycles. Someone else suggested that we create a Middlebury welcoming center within the library. Someone else suggested that we build the ultimate library of the future and get a national foundation of cooperation to underwrite it. <laughs> Looking forward, both the library building committee and the trustees have enthusiastically endorsed the goals and vision proposed in the report you received from our architects and me on August 22. Our aim is to break ground by 2023 or 2024 to honor the 100th anniversary of our original building. Now we need your support. It would be unrealistic and probably inappropriate to proceed without you. Either we go ahead trustees and the select board together or we put this project aside. And it does matter when the select board acts. The library is in the process of recruiting a new director and the skills needed by that director will be different if the project goes forward than it will if it does not. So we hope you can make your decision soon. If we proceed, Ilsley will need a director with skills not usually called upon for that position. Among them, abilities to plan, create materials for, and lead a successful public education campaign, run a major fundraising campaign, personally solicit very large gifts that cannot be done by anyone but the number one person at the library. Not by a trustee, they can support it, but the number one person has to ask for the biggest gifts. Enable the staff to cope with major change and assume no res new responsibilities during the transition. Inspire the public to accept the inconvenience of temporary reductions in services, meeting spaces, and programming. Advocate for voter approval of a town bond, relocate collections, furnishings, and equipment, temporarily reduce library programs, and make do without a community room. Finally, move back into the library and determine how best to use the staff. On the other hand, if Middlebury prefers not to go forward at this time, the trustees can select a new director who has only the usual skills for such a position. We'll all have a lot more free time, but we'll be taking some risks. One, we'll have ina inadequate and unsafe facilities for children. We'll have an inefficient air conditioning and heating system that is expensive to maintain and may suddenly need to be replaced at a cost of over $600,000. We'll have a tired elevator that also may suddenly need to be replaced. We'll have insufficient deteriorating restrooms and failing plumbing in the basement. 
will have unobserved entrances that may need to be protected. Meanwhile, the library's need, excuse me, meanwhile, the public's need for library services will not go away, and costs will probably rise. Finally, we need to ask ourselves, how would an outdated library affect our area's ability to attract new businesses, residents, and highly qualified employees for our hospital, our banks, our professional firms, and our college. We hope you will endorse our goals and join us in a public education campaign and help us raise funds. In particular, we need your participation to obtain input and support from the surrounding towns to move and expand the children's library with dedicated spaces for preschoolers and teens, to create two accessible, safe entrances within sight of the staff, to install a new HVAC system, build a net zero facility, install a new elevator, add and improve restrooms, relocate computer space, restore the 1923 building, create a larger community room that can be subdivided into smaller spaces when needed and to improve wiring for technology and electricity. I know it's a big project and surely we must all do it together. So John, um coming here tonight is specifically looking for our support for this project. Um, no, I'm not expecting you to, I mean, I'd be delighted to have you sign off on what I suggested, right. but I'm not expecting that. Right. But I do hope that you will <clears throat> take it up with uh, all deliberate speed. Okay, so. And I speak for the trustees here. Right, not necessarily tonight, but that's, that is what the trustees are looking well, for. I just want to make sure. We need to hire a new director, right. and we need to know what that director's skills need to be. That's okay. the urgency. If we weren't looking for a new director, I wouldn't say that the urgency is nearly as great. Okay. The only question I had for, um, for you was that I, I thought you were moving ahead with the, the um, fundraising feasibility study, but apparently you're not. So I just wanted to talk about that for a minute so that board members are aware of that as well. Yeah. Um, we have uh, reached an agreement with a fundraising consulting firm to do a feasibility study for the library. We're not sure at this time when it would be wisest to do that. There's some feeling that we need to do more education of the community about the needs for this library project before asking members of the community to tell us how likely they are to make generous gifts. You want to add anything to that? Yeah, we also, as a board, agreed that we'd like the director to be in place sooner rather than later so that he or she will be a part of the decision when the mm -hmm. disability study will be and the, what we're calling, uh, public awareness campaign. Okay. I just, I told John this earlier today, but I wanted the trustees to know too, and I'm sure he'll bring that back, but for, for me, from a select board standpoint, that feasibility study plays a key role in how we, I would voice support, because <laughs> I would know better what that looks like and how we can best do that. So I think what works best for you might not work best for me, but I don't, I don't know. So, and let I'm me, not sure what the other board. Clarify that. Okay. <clears throat> when I talk about asking for your support, okay, I'm not talking about anything even close to a financial commitment. No. I'm talking about whether you think the town of Middlebury needs the same things that the trustees in the library building committee thinks it needs, or whether you think. Even if we need it, we don't want to do it right now. But we need your support now before we do the feasibility study so that people who we contact when we do the feasibility study say, well, we haven't heard anything from the select board. Where do they stand on this? Well, we we said, need that. We sent two members of our select board to 
participate on that. I thought that was a show of support for reaching the decision of whether to move forward or not. So I'm just, I'm confused as to what you're looking for from us. I'm looking for, I'm looking for <clears throat> a clear, okay. straightforward statement of support for the goals of this project from the elected leaders of this town okay. and a willingness to help raise the money. Not, you know, I don't think you, okay. you, you this is a town department. You, you, if you want to, we need your help to raise the money so we don't have to raise so much through a bond. You know, we need you to speak out as well as us. We got to do this together. This is not, this is not okay. a little project over here. This is a big deal and it needs the elected leaders to play a leadership role. Well, I, I mean, I'm, um, um, I have a partiality to libraries, uh, but I, I think it's also the fact that, uh, that, that um, a town without a library uh, is really not much of a town. And uh, when I see the, uh, particularly the services, in fact, I, one of the things that I, I've been in the library several times, and and uh, it rather warms my heart because I see um, seniors and children together uh, in, in in this place and uh, really finding satisfaction for the for the time that they have on their hands and I, I it does seem to me that this this provides a, a major service if the town's purpose is the welfare of the people who live here and uh, I, I you know I'm I'm ready to support this wholeheartedly. I have, I have no hesitation as, as, as far as that goes. And I think uh, the design, the plan that, that has been outlined so far is, um, um, is, is an excellent one. And uh, one of the things I think you've, you've pointed out, I mean, safety. Uh, I mean, to a certain extent, I mean, we risk our children when we bring them to the library now because um, uh, the safety of our children and it, it's not a it's, it's not the safest kind of thing and and uh, but um, so anyway right I, I would I, I think um, and, and also I, I, I think uh, this is a library not for Middlebury but for the greater Middlebury area and I, I think that the other the surrounding towns, need to take a responsibility for this. It's their library as well as, as, as the town of Middlebury's. Um, I, mean, I, I, I suppose just a general um, expression of support. Um, at some point, uh, obviously, we're going to have to decide. Uh, we're going to have to take out a bond for how much, uh, and that will, uh, that will result in taxpayers contributing um, to the to the maintenance of the library as they do now, but I mean, in, in, in to a certain extent. But but this would be a greater addition. Um, I don't see how we're going to do this without some kind of a bond, um, unless we can find some you know mm -hmm. people who love libraries who are also well healed. If I had a few million dollars that uh, you know that I didn't care about uh, uh, or I didn't need or something like that I but but I mean but 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 I think my, my guess is it's not going to be um, a privately funded operation yeah, and, it's, yeah, and uh, so but I you know, I'd be willing to make a motion that that the select board expresses uh, support for the ongoing project of the um, of, of the library edition and uh, um, I, mean, yeah. uh, I hesitate to say that we're going to join and help raising private funds and things like that. I'm not sure if that's, that's part of maybe there would be a committee or something like that and we could send a representative to that. I don't, I don't know. It's just never something that I've, I've dealt with on the select board before. So I'm not sure if I would one well, that, I, uh, yeah, 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 what you're yeah, saying is yeah. in general. I just yeah, yeah, no, no. I I, I agree I with you that we're make not sure that we're, we're not. Uh, his uh, at the same time. We don't raise money that way. Right. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something yeah. that we could wait for the 
the whole board as well, but I'm I'm fine with a general. I've thought about that before. Yeah, Heather? So what it seems to me the library trustees need right now is our support to hire a director with the skills. And yeah. so I think I would recommend a different motion or an amendment to your motion oh, to ahead. make it specific to that need okay because i don't see any harm in pursuing a director with those skills that's what i was well, going to say yeah. Yeah. Well, that doesn't that does not really fill our need okay that's but you nice. still that's okay nice. okay you know so we'll go ahead and do that that makes it harder to find a person okay yeah but it, it does not we need to have clear statement I'm not asking you I think I overdid it when say helping raise private funds no, okay I, that's not important. Yeah. okay but there are the things I the bullet list below that little bold statement okay are things that are essential to this project okay and if you want to wordsmith them that's fine okay so but it needs to be it needs to have teeth it needs to have mm. meaning Okay, so that the people of the town know that their elected leaders okay. really want to do this. So let's take it some time. It doesn't mean that you're going to support a bond. No. It doesn't mean we're going to get the bond passed. No. It doesn't mean we're no. going to have a, a successful feasibility no. study. Okay. It just means you want us to use our time and energy and a little money now to move forward. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, I want to hear. She had yeah, her hand I, up first. I'd like to make to underscore that in three ways. One is you may have noticed in John's report, we're aiming at a breaking ground around 2003 to 2023, the 100th anniversary of the beautiful gem of the original building. So this is a process that's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of energy, that's the first point. The second point is when you support us, it seems to me as the chair of the board that you're saying somebody was, ah, oh, we really need a new library, and you're saying, yes, we're looking forward to Middlebury having a library that's going to serve this community for 50 more years, and we're really excited about it. Mm -hmm. That's the support. We certainly don't expect you to go out and raise money, mm -hmm. but we expect you not to roll your eyes when someone says, I heard how much this is going to be, and now I've heard they're not even going to do it next year. We expect, instead of rolling your eyes, we expect you to, to know what's going on and to be in favor of it. Uh, and I, I think since we are a municipal library, that is an appropriate thing to ask for, and it's also a really exciting thing to ask for. Yeah, I think I, I, there's one thing. The library is not the only service supplied by the town of Middlebury and paid for by its taxpayers mm -hmm. that is widely used out by people outside of town who don't have to pay a fee for them. Services, mm -hmm. and if <clears throat> you are the people who can start negotiating with the other select towns, the library trustees are not in a position to do that. And this may not be only about the library; it may offer future opportunities for other facilities. Um, Victor, and then Heather. Yeah, I mean, um, the library is a municipal institution, uh, I think, and uh, I think. The select board should recognize that. In other words, we have a we have a re responsibility to make sure that we have a first class library that um, that serves the p people of the community. Um, and um, uh, I think I think the difficulty we're having is just you know just to quickly formulate a, a motion. Uh, I think we need some time need to, to take some time. Uh, and I think Susan's, I mean, I think that's what you're getting here is not a hesitation to support the project, but exactly how to put it mm -hmm. in words that, um, uh, that meet the need. And, mm -hmm. and I think, I, and, uh, you know, I feel that we would be irresponsible if we said, oh, no, that's not our problem. We're going to walk away from it. You raise the money and do the thing, fine. You have our blessing to go out and, 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 and um, that, it, that it, it is a municipal institution. We have a responsibility for it, but I think we need to decide exactly how we're going to express that. Heather? I, I'm actually good. I, okay. just, I just wanted to say that I, I think we all... Yeah. Unofficially, 
I haven't heard anybody yeah. say they don't support yeah. it. I haven't. Yeah. I think it's a safety hazard, and Excuse me? it's a safety hazard. It's an accident waiting to happen, and for us not to support that would be foolish. I think so. We should support it in some form. Mm. I think that John is asking us to support it more fully, you know, because yeah. because we could do repairs, you know, but but you're asking for Definitely. the project, and 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 I thought that it might have been okay to just make a general statement to the effect that you were starting mm -hmm. that says we support going forward with the project as you've been planning it and hiring a director that could support mm -hmm. this project and that's it and, and we know all the other work about mm -hmm. bonds and fundraising and mm -hmm. and we we know we'll learn a lot from the feasibility study that gets done well, I would like it very much, and I think I think you're all right that you need to think about this, and you need to write words that you're comfortable with, and words that say something. And all I would ask you to do between now and when you're ready to when you're finished is to look at the list of bullets on the last page, the front mm -hmm. page of this, and see which of those you feel good about, which you want to modify, which you want to eliminate, what if anything you want to add. You know, I, I, I just put these here because I think they express mm -hmm. the essence of what this project is about. But that doesn't mean it's the only way to say that. No. Um, Hang on a second. I think Catherine wanted to know you're good. Okay. Um, so let's take some time. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I would hope that maybe between now and our next meeting we could come up with a statement that um, meets your desire with that. I mean, that, that would be two weeks from now. Let's bring it up and we can have that discussion and mm. see, hopefully we can have something. I, I mean, I, I think that I mean, we can be in contact with you and no, work I mean, up I, something. I, I, listen, it's far from my place to tell you what to do. I mean, I tried really hard not to imply that I'm telling you what to do. I'm just trying to lay out the choices. But if there's any way that I can be of assistance to you, uh, I'm delighted to try to do that. Okay. Okay. Well, you've provided a detailed statement of what needs to be done, and I'm grateful for that. And I think, uh, and, 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 and why it needs to be done. I mean, the situation that we're in is not one that we can simply complacently look away from. And uh, so. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's been a pleasure to work on this project. And it's you've done, to you've done, I think, a great job, John. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you for listening. So the FY18 five FY18 year to date budget report, Kathleen. Uh, just very briefly on the budget reports. Uh, they are in your packet. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. We're at the time of this report, which is uh, August 31st. We were two months into the budget season, so um, not seeing any trends emerging yet. Um, on the positive side, I would note that we our expenditures for summer maintenance are higher than they were last year. That's because we've been out doing a lot of work on the roads. Oh. Is all I have to note. Okay. Uh, so we're going to have a soft winter. That's what you're saying. Soft winter? Is that what it's I, I'm not <laughs> making any predictions. <laughs> sure to offend somebody. Soft winter, hard winter. <laughs> um, overview of the FY19 budget. Schedule. That is also in your packet. Coming right up on us, I'll be asking department heads to submit their budgets for the end of November and getting to you in mid-November the first draft of the uh, FY19 budget. And then we'll be working hard through December and January uh, to formulate a proposal. October is all about the um, capital improvement budgets for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yay! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, approval of the check warrants? Yes. Do you need oh, where is I have not signed that now. Yeah, we didn't okay. sign it either. Um, sign, it, <laughs> sign it back down. Sign it first. I did. You signed it. You could just pass it. Yeah. It's us that we're doing. Go ahead. 
Oh, do you need the paper? No, no, I got no, the okay, paper. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So everything seems to be in order except for the Green Mountain Power Bill that Laura had mentioned then uh, about Exchange Street Treatment Plant. Everything seems to be in order. So I would like to make a motion to approve total expenditures in the amount of $2,312,267.57, out of which $2,223,415.56 goes to accounts payable, and $88,852.01 goes to the payroll for the period of September 13 to September 26, 2017. Ooh. Second. Chatter gets that one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thanks, Farhan. Who was the second on that? That was hey. Heather. Okay, thanks, Heather. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. <laughs> so close, though. Um, town manager's Here. report. So, as the board discussed this summer, the actor transit hub will be relocating to academy street uh, in your packet for your information is an outline of the expected um, uh, permitting process for that we're not scheduling it to come back before the select board it'll be going to public works for work in the right-of-way permit and to the zoning administrator for um, any nece necessary land use permits I that's, that's all I have. I think that's okay. Although there was some discussion at the select board about the location of the of the actual um, shelter, and I don't know if if they determined that. I, I'd be curious to know. So it, you're happy to talk to if you'd like me to have Jen contact you once she receives the application um, with the. Um, I'll probably know anyway. But I didn't know the so, so you're curious about the location the of the shelter? Would Certainly can include the designs in your packet when we receive them. Um, board member concerns, Victor? No. Nothing? Farhad? I just had a question about that uh, uh, the gentleman who was here for tax stabilization policy. Mm -hmm. What is the criteria for somebody to, what, what makes somebody qualify for something like that? I'm not aware, I, this is something new to me. Yeah, it was, it was in our board packet, but it's really kind of hard to tell um, because it was, for me, it was tied up with the, the tax part of it. It was, he said that he met like five of the criteria and I didn't see it as five criteria, so maybe that would be helpful and I was um, interested um, he said that part of what he wants to fund is new equipment so to drill down into that and see yeah. what those expenses look like I think would be helpful yeah. uh, so to what, us uh, what do we base somebody's qualification based on uh, their financial situation or it just because somebody new come to the town what how do we make that what makes somebody else not qualify for that that's a good. That's, that's a very good question. That's where the process is yeah. a little fuzzy. Yeah. That's where we were hoping. I think you've, you've you've hit right on the. You're exactly in where yeah. I was. Yeah. <laughs> we got ninety-five thousand dollars over five years. A lot of money for the town. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it. it I mean, we, we don't have a policy, and I think this is a r really troublesome. It's the process to, to review that and compare and contrast because what if, you know, three or four people come forward, how do you even compare right. them to each other, let alone the fact that one gets to go through? So, yeah, it's a great question. But, well, we do have a policy. Right, but it's, it's hard to tell criteria from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I found. I looked yeah. at it and I read through it three times before. Okay. But he was like, I meet five of the criteria and I'm like, no, nah, that's not mm -hmm. quite yeah. how I read yeah. it. So, um, that's yeah. it. It's, I think it's tough because I want to do something to support them somehow but I also don't want to do it on the backs of individual taxpayers. Right. I really liked the revolving loan fund and wish we could go back to that as a, a better possibility than this but that's me. That's one thing but um, what's, what about the tax abatement process? Isn't that 
But that's charging taxes and, and getting, and there's criteria for abatement that has nothing to do with yeah. creating jobs or anything like that. It's more hardship, uh, yeah, uh, that, personal that one, yeah. hardship. And but, but couldn't we tell them that they could, they could come for that? If it, so I think we're kind of yeah, we're getting outside of the okay. scope of yeah, the we're, member we're, concerns. We're working on process. So I think let's work on process. Hmm. And okay. it's a, I thought of that as well, but I, I I don't think so. Um, did you have anything else for no, her? No, thank you. Laura? I saw in the recreation notes that there was a report about um, continued unhappiness about the gym and it being hot. And I know that we addressed that in our select board meeting. And I don't know if the rec department is, is saying we need to cool it or we need to change programming just because that's the reality of gyms. Our school gyms are like that, you know, and large gyms are like that. So I was curious so they had, what kind of dialogue they had. We had a brief conversation. I brought it up at the last meeting, and they mentioned that statewide, it's very uncommon for a gym to have an air conditioning system. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the majority of the people were saying. Uh, we are meeting up October 3rd again, so I can bring it up. Mm -hmm. Because I think relative to other buildings, it's cooler, you know, yeah. um, because the envelope mm -hmm. is so tight. Mm -hmm. So it might be that you just have to manage programming. Yeah, I think that should be talked about. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Um, and uh, we're in our first week of the Way to Go Commuter Challenge, um, which is targeted for schools. So Mary Hogan is is entered for that challenge and we're excited about this opportunity for people to reduce their car use and help unclog the traffic we see at eight o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the afternoon um, by considering other options including dropping off kids farther away from the entrances and walking in so and we have walking school bus routes set up for that and we have a, a walk and roll to school day coming up next week October 4th, it's a big one. It's an international walk and roll to school day. So you'll be joining children all over the world on that day and walking and rolling to school. And we invite select board members to join any of our walking school bus routes that morning, um, if you'd like, which is October 4th. Um, so you're committing to about a half an hour. You'll be done by 8.05 <laughs> if you wanted to do that. Um, and We'd love to see you, so you're invited. You're always invited to any walk and roll day, but this this is a special one. Thanks, Laura. Heather? I think I'm all set for tonight. Okay, I think I've said enough. Thank you. <laughs> Nick, did you have anything? Yeah, I do, and I'll be quick because I still have to go to work tonight. So, um, now what I understand is you and Forest are planning to close the Middlebury Ranger Station here in the very near future, and. Um, I understand that, um, uh, I mean, this, this site is a highly visited site and it actually has a lot of benefit to our recreational use, so it's, it's going to be a loss. So I think we need to go along and uh, communicate with the Forest Service um, to find out what can be done to maintain a ranger presence in Middlebury. I've heard some discussion of some options that are being uh, discussed out there, but, but nothing that, that's firm. So. Um, I would like to suggest that we, uh, as a town of living, led by Kathleen, I would certainly be willing to be a board rep if that's so chosen because I speak their language to have the communication with the superintendent, um, find out how we can keep a ranger presence in, in Middlebury um, so that uh, we can continue to have the benefits benefit that they present to recreation. That's a good point. I thought there I, was. I thought they were. Yeah. Mm. Sounds yeah, like you could I, I can follow check. up with uh, yeah. Chris yeah. Metric. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Um, so, as I understand it, we do need an executive session for contract negotiations. So, I was hoping Laura might take us through that. Okay. Um, in accordance with Vermont's open meeting law requirements, I move that the board find that premature general knowledge of the consideration of contract contracts negotiations 
contract negotiations would clearly place the select board at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its litigation strategy if it discusses these contracts in public. Is there a second? I I'll second. second. We'll give second. it to Heather again. <laughs> you can do the next can one. You can do the next one. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, aye. Oppo any opposed? All right. I further move that the board enter into executive session to discuss the contract negotiations under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes. Okay, Farhan. I will second that. It's your big moment. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye.